Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Sonic Labyrinth. The last part, we started off the game and now we're gonna go finish it off. Yeah, this game's only like a half hour long, as I said. Now something I, I think I briefly mentioned the last part is that Sonic can spin dash, but that's actually all he can do. There is no jump button in this game. Which, mind you, you don't really need it because none of the levels ever have something that you could feasibly jump over. But to some people I can see that being annoying. Oh, uh, also, quick warning, seizure time is coming again in about a second and a half, so be careful, and there go my eyeballs. Uh, one thing I think I uh, very slightly mentioned in the last part was that Sonic is obviously very slow in this game. At least with his walking speed, unless you spam the spin dash. I'm kind of glad he is, because if he was really fast, he would probably control, like, complete and total crap in these small stages. Uh, fairly similarly to Sonic 3D Blast, so I'm actually kind of glad they did that the way they did. And now we're on to 3-3. Now, uh, obviously we've gotten Chaos Emeralds for all the bosses we've beaten so far, but the thing is, the reason that you actually want to go to the special board back in the Labyrinth of the Sea's third stage is because, yes, going to all zones technically guarantees the ending, but what actually happens there is going into that stage adds a Chaos Emerald to your total. There are still only six Chaos Emeralds, by the way. Which is kind of odd. By this point, 7 was a thing for at least 3 or 4 games, so what's going on there? By the way, Factory 3 is actually fairly simple. A, couple, a bit of up and down and all around, but it's overall fairly easy in comparison to some other things. And I'm actually really glad that the platforms move as quickly as they did, otherwise that could be annoying. Also, stay right about here because this does look like a place where one would show up, but there is a platform. That took me a while to figure out my first playthrough, because this is kind of out of the way. Admittedly, game hovers are pretty hard to get in this game, all things considered, because you usually can get live so easily. But, uh, it, there can be some issues, and I think this is actually one of the first stages, no, probably the last stage was, where if you get hit and a key gets knocked off into the pit, you have to go back to where you originally found that key. Which sounds annoying, but it's really not, because you can move fast enough through these stages for it's not to be much of an issue. And with that, we're done with, uh, 3-3. Which means we're on to the boss stage. And this is probably the easiest boss in the game. Also, I love that little victory jingle. I think the speed, uh, bonus there at the score screen is essentially your time bonus, so the faster you go through, the higher it is. Really, these little slopes at this point are just here for rings. There are there, there are things that can hurt you, yeah, but it's nothing really major. Plus, uh, there's usually rings before uh, the exit after a uh, obstacle that harms you and gets rid of your rings. So really, you should always have rings entering a boss fight, unless you're just uh, intentionally avoiding them. Either way, boss of the Labyrinth of the Factory is Needleman, who constantly sends some of his little buddies out at you at first, so just head on over to the left or right to avoid them. And eventually, he himself will spawn right about... I want to say now? He is pretty simple. Get behind him, spin dash into him. Add, repeat, ad nauseum until he dies. Also, let it be known that apparently Wily is in fact not as intelligent as Eggman, because Eggman built Spike Wallman way earlier. And there's Chaos Emerald number four. These bosses are pathetic. <laughs> Mind you, in a game like this, there's not really much you could do with boss fights that wouldn't make them obscenely cheap or difficult, so I can understand that at least, but... Eh, they could have done a bit more with them, I think. And welcome to the Labyrinth of the Castle, Final Zone! Though thinking about it, you'd think the factory would be the final level instead of the castle because that seems like a lot more of a robotic place. Either way, Castle 1 is the easiest stage in the game because it's even more linear than the first level. There are three side paths you can go on to get the keys, and then there's just where the exit is. It is pathetic. I'm not sure if this is meant to introduce you to some of the uh, obstacles for this area, but it is pathetic. There's also some really strong conveyor belts in this level, by the way, which look like little waterfalls. You're gonna learn to hate them, because they can really screw up your control in a select few sections. And there we go. That's it. That is always my fastest level, I believe. Because, seriously, why is it so short? 
Oh, actually, length is a different thing from difficulty. If it, if it had a bit more obstacles, maybe, but, eh. I, that could have been a bit better placed. <laughs> and we're already on to 4 2. Which is. Uh, my second least favorite level in the game, probably. It's fairly simple on layout, and especially compared to where the doors are, because I think at this point, uh, the doors work a bit differently. Uh, the doors will always take you to a specific place no matter what, even going back through them. The big problem with this is that it's very mazy, even for this game at this point, because there are a lot of extra paths that are just dead ends or unnecessary. So, yeah. It's not the worst in the game with that, that's the next level, but this place can be kind of annoying. And I think if you fall off the ledges here, that might be death. Don't quote me on that, though. Because I don't think I've actually ever fallen off. Death would be what I would expect, but if you just land on a platform that kind of makes you backtrack a bit more, that actually could be a bit more cruel. Also, I know for a fact that every single uh, bad nick in the game actually has a name, but honestly, they're not worth memorizing because they're not the main ones. Anyway, you know what this game probably can be compared to? Star Fox Adventures. Because... In a way, if they had just changed the main character, it probably would have been a fairly well-received game. This would have been a nice little puzzle game on its own. And Star Fox Adventures would have been a nice little adventure game. But because they had... Well, first off, step on the Switch, by the way. Need to step on that to beat the stage. Had those these games had their main character changed to be either who was originally intended in the case of Star Fox Adventures or maybe just some random mouse in this game's case, they probably wouldn't be hated as much because they would just be some random adventure game and some random puzzle plat uh, puzzle game. Now oh, this is kind of a puzzle game. Labyrinth, there we go. But uh, I'm get it's mostly just due to, I think, the character that's associated with it that it's not as beloved as it could be. Eh, mind you, image is everything, isn't it? Eh. And with that, though, we're on to the longest and my least favorite level in the game, Castle 3. This place is long. We are here for, I want to say, the next two or three minutes, which doesn't sound like much, but for this game, that's pretty long, actually. This place has so many dead ends, so many pathways that link up to each other, that it's honestly the first level in the game I can call a full-out labyrinth. And it has a lot of the water, too, which pushes you all over the place. This level can suck if you don't know where to go, and if you know where to go, it can be kind of dangerous, because that water can threaten to push you off your path, and it caused you to have to go back through a loop in order to get back there. This level sucks, but I love the song so much. That, that water right there sucks, especially... Uh, I've fallen off that cliff so many times, it's honestly not even funny. It's quite disturbing, actually. I'm trying to think back of when I first experienced this game. I know it was on Sonic Adventure DX, which means I probably didn't play it until... 2008, 2009, because that was when I first played Sonic Adventure 1. And I, I I didn't think much of this game then, and I still don't think much of it now, but I think more of this than I do Sonic Adventure... Not Sonic Adventure. Uh, Sonic 3 Blast, Shadow the Hedgehog, and... Wii U Boom. I find 3DS Boom to actually be fairly playable. Mostly just due to length, actually, because this game's only like a half hour long. But yeah, this stage sucks, just follow where I went, otherwise you'll probably be wandering around trying to find out where to go for a while, and that would suck. And with that, that is the final normal stage out of the game done. All that's left now is the final boss. I actually really do like this uh, end screen motion, just him going back and forth on this track. It looks pretty good for Game Gear. It's like they attempt to do the Sonic 2, uh, half-pipe, kind of. And as usual, we got the little, uh, thing first, the slope that we have to fall down. And it's nothing really big of an issue. In fact, I think this is probably the easiest slope out of all of them because the rigs are so easily laid out. Don't be surprised if you gain one or two one-ups during this, but may just make sure you have rigs by the end. Also, I'm actually not sure about one thing with this game, and that's whether or not the lives can go above 9, but it just doesn't display above 9, you know what I mean? Similarly to, uh, Dino City and such. I'll have to look that up at some point, probably. Either way, final boss is, as you would expect, Dr. Ivor Robotnik! And he starts off by sending a lot of the Metropolis Zone balloon guys at you. 
And you can just walk away from them. They come down so slowly that they're not much of a threat, honestly. Eventually, though, he will come down in his machine, I think. Although he roboticized himself or something's going on there. And this fight is easy. He'll home in on you, drop a bomb, in which case you can spin dash away from him and then spin dash into him to do damage. I do recommend heading, uh, spin dashing away vertically instead of horizontally because you can get the most hits off by bouncing up and down like that. Find you more often than not, you're probably only getting one or two hits in to begin with. The, I, I don't think I've ever gotten more than two. This is basically a war of attrition, though I love the final boss theme. Okay, that was weird. I don't know how, why I went in that direction. But yeah, this fight is really easy. Eventually, we will start phase two. In which case, nothing really changes, honestly. Admittedly, though, looking at the boss design here, this does remind me of the first boss in the next game. Either way, phase two is just Eggman's head, which is all sorts of disturbing. And he fires a laser down at the floor that'll split off to the left and right, so make sure you always spin dash vertically from him. And at that point, just do the strategy we were doing in the first phase, spin dash into him. Usually in this phase, you'll only get enough time for one hit, but honestly, it's still not that much harder. This game is really easy. Which, mind you, better a short, easy game than a overly hard and overly long game, because while I love long games and I like hard games, some games can drag on a bit too long if they're not too careful. But yeah, this fight is honestly pretty pathetic. And there we go, and... That's not a Chaos Emerald, but I'll take it. And that's the game! Pretty easy. Kind of disgustingly easy, actually, but... Oh well. Run, fat man! That wasn't a Chaos Emerald. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, that is Sonic Labyrinth, and how is it? It's okay. It's not the best Sonic game out there, not by a long shot, but I find it at least playable compared to some other Sonic games. If you want to play it, even though you've seen the entire game here, it's on so it's on the Game Gear. I don't think there was a Master System version for this. Uh, on the Mega Collections, and that's about it. I think it's also on the Virtual Console for 3DS. Next up, though, in the Game Gear-a-thon, we're going even farther down in my list of games I don't like than this with the Sonic name on it. We're heading on over to Sonic Blasts! Oh, <laughs> why? Anyway, uh, for getting all the Chaos Emeralds, which that one that Eggman dropped at the very end there, that was the final one. The ending only very slightly changes. I think the only change is that you escape. And I think that's also how you get the level select code. Yeah, there's this level select code in this one, too. And I think it's going to show up in the credits in a moment, actually. So I'll just let you see it there. I know you have to enter it on the title screen. Because it, what it is, it's a basically a combination of up, down, left, and right to some extent. I think it's, uh... Ah, we'll see in a second. The only real thing I can recommend about this game is looking up the soundtrack. Okay, up two, right three, down six, left nine. Isn't that the Fibonacci sequence or something? It's very similar to it. And you do that on the title screen. The sound test will be selected, will be replaced by the level select. But yeah, this game's kinda alright. And hey, a ranking system for the first time in the Sonic series! Five stars in the, is the max, and I did that fairly easily. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in Sonic Blast. <laughs>